Do you see this world where just everything's a computing surface? You see that possibility? Just everything's a computer? Yeah, I don't see any reason that that couldn't be achieved. Uh, it turns out that sand goes into glass, and glass is pretty useful too. And, you know, like, why not? Why not? So, right. uh, uh, the very important question then, if, um, if we're living in a simulation and uh, the simulation is running a computer, like what what's the architecture of that computer, do you think? Mm. So you're, you're saying, is it a uh, quantum system? Is it yeah, a- Yeah, like this whole quantum discussion, is it needed? Or can can we run it on a, <laughs> on a you know, with a RISC-V architecture, uh, a bunch of CPUs? I think it comes down to the right tool for the job. Okay, and so- And what's the compiler? Uh, yeah, exactly, that's, that's my question. <sighs> How do I get that job? Be the universe <laughs> compiler. Um, uh, and so there, as far as we know, quantum 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 systems are the bottom of the tur- pile of turtles so far. Yeah. <laughs> and so we don't know efficient ways to implement quantum systems without using quantum computers. Yeah, and that's totally outside of everything we've talked about. Quantum, but, but who runs that quantum computer? Yeah. Right. So if it, if it, if we really are living in a simulation then is it bigger quantum computers? Is it different ones? Like, wh- how, how does that work out? How does that scale? Well, it's it's the same size. It's the same size. But then but then the thought of the simulation is that you don't have to run the whole thing, that, you know, we humans are cognitively very you limited. checkpoints. <laughs> checkpoints, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and if we, the point at which we human, so you basically do minimal amount of, uh, what is it, uh, the, the Swift does um, uh, on write, Copy, copy on right. On right yeah. So you only yeah, yeah. you only adjust the simulation every, every... Par- parallel universe theories, yeah, yeah, right? And yeah. so and so every time a, a decision's made, yeah. somebody opens the Schrodinger box, then yeah. uh, there's a fork, right? and this, then this could happen. And <laughs> and then uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> for considering the possibility. But yeah, so it may, may not require you know the entirety of the universe to simulate it. But it's um, interesting to think about. Uh, as we create this this higher and higher fidelity systems but i do want to ask on the on the quantum computer side because everything we've talked about with us with you work with sci fi with every with compilers none of that includes quantum computers right that's true so have you ever thought <laughs> about uh what a you know the, this whole serious engineering work of quantum computers looks like of compilers of architectures, all of that kind of stuff. So I've looked at it a little bit. I know almost nothing about it, which means that at some point I will have to find an excuse to get involved because that's how. But I do work. you think? Do you um, think that's a thing to be like? Is with your little tingly senses of the timing of when to be involved? Is it not yet? Well, so so the thing I do really well is I jump into messy systems and figure out how to make them. Figure out what the truth in the situation is. Try to figure out what. Um, what the unifying theory is, how to like factor the complexity, how to find a beautiful answer to a problem that um, has been well studied and lots of people have bashed their heads against it. I don't know that quantum computers are mature enough and accessible enough to be um, figured out yet, right? And um, the uh, I think the open question with quantum computers is, is there a useful problem that gets solved with a quantum computer that makes it worth the economic cost of like having one of these things and having having legions of people that 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 uh, set it up. You go back to the fifties, right? And there's the projections of the world can, will only need seven seven computers, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. part of that was that people hadn't figured out what they're useful for. Yeah. What are the algorithms we want to run? What are the problems that get solved? And this comes back to how do we make the world better, either economically or making somebody's life better, or like solving a problem that wasn't solved before, things like this, and um, I think that just we're a little bit too early in that development cycle because it's still like literally a science project, yeah. not a negative connotation, right? It's literally a science project and um, the progress there is amazing. And so I don't know if it's 10 years away, if it's two years away, exactly where that breakthrough happens. But um, you look at uh, machine learning, it we went through a few winners um, before the AlexNet transition yeah. and then suddenly it had its breakout moment. And that was the catalyst that then drove the talent flocking into it. That's what drove the economic applications of it. That's what drove the 
um, the technology to go faster because you now have more minds thrown at the problem. This is what caused uh, a, like a serious knee in uh, deep learning and the algorithms that we're using. And um, and so I think that's what quantum needs to go through. And so right now it's in that that formidable finding itself, getting the the like literally the physics figured out, and. Um, and then, and, and then it has to figure out the application that makes yeah. uh, that's useful. Like yeah, right but, now, but I'm 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 not skeptical that I think that will happen. I think it's just you know ten years away, something like that. I forgot to ask, what programming language do you think the simulation is written in? Ooh, probably Lisp. <laughs> so not Swift. Like if you were to bet, you were to bet. Uh, 